So welcome to my first episode on how to get started into creating your own Pokemon ROM hacks using Emerald Decompilation. So I know this is a, the same video I've done before, but this is a updated version with the new expansion 1.13. If you see the previous one from 11 months ago, that's 1.9, a lot of the information is still valid and I go into a bit more details there, but I want to do a quick update just to run through the latest install and give some information for you all. For those who haven't heard of Decompilation before, it is a, though I think is the best way right now to get into Pokemon hacking. Some very genius people have broken Pokemon Emerald into its subsequent parts. So this is all of the code needed for Pokemon Emerald to run, to be played, and have all of its parts. This version, Prep Pokemon Emerald, is sort of the core version. It's the base one, which has got none of the modern changes. And you can see they've broken it down into C, C++, make files and assembly. But So if you know how to code, or want to get interested in coding, this is a great way to do it. There is a better version, or an expanded version, I should say, called Pokemon Emerald Expansion. And this is the one most people will use because it has a huge number of changes. You can just see here, there's a configuration files where you can start making changes for everything you want. This has the modern mechanics like fairy type. It has physical special split. It's very easy to add your new things into it. You can have following Pokemon. You can have following trainers. You can do just about everything you can imagine. All those modern Pokemon ROM hacks you see will probably be built off of this. So let's get into it and just show you how to get started you can start making your own changes. If you're interested in sort of, you've already got this, you want to get started in Pori Maps or Pori Script, that'll be the next episode. And if you have any specific queries, feel free to drop a message here. I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Join us on the Discord. Or if you have specific sort of coding questions, I will try and do videos where I can teach you all how to do it. So we're going to get started and we're going to open up this place. It is just called GitHub. I'll put it, I'll put it in the comments or we put it in the description, github.com, rhhideout, Pokemon Emerald Expansion. Everything we're going to be doing is coming off of here. So we can go into a stalling. If you don't want to open this up and you just want to follow along with me, then that's fine. But first we're going to introduce is WSL. WSL is the Windows subsystem for Linux. What we're going to be doing is adding a new shell onto our operating system. So Windows is our operating system for most people. If you are using Linux or Mac, probably have a better idea on how to do technical things so you can just come here and follow a slightly different guide but we're going to stick to the windows one and hoping that you guys who maybe aren't used to doing this uh, can get invested into it we're going to open up the wsl installation thing it's going to ask us to do a couple of things first open your windows powershell as administrator it will look something like this from there we're going to copy this piece line in paste it in and it's going to run some code I already have Ubuntu installed, so not much is going to happen here. It's going to take you about a minute or so, depending on the speed of your internet connection on your computer. And once that is successful, it's going to ask you to reset your computer. So I will put a little marker in here so you can easily come back to it. But once you have reset your computer, we're going to continue with the next part. So once you've got that, you're going to want to open up WSL2. This is the newer version and it is quite a bit faster. So open up your PowerShell again as administrator. Poke this line of code in, WSL dash set version dash Ubuntu 2. And you're going to open it. Um, don't worry about what it is, it's not working for me. Um, I use Debian, but what you're going to find is it's going to open up a brand new thing. Kind of something, it's going to look like this with a nice green text. So my one doesn't run with the Ubuntu one. I actually use Debian, but you're going to find it is very similar. It's just another version of Linux. So once you've got your Ubuntu set up or Debian or whichever one you do, we now need to set up the core tool. All of the things we're going to need for our computer to be able to start working and understanding it. So we're going to open up Ubuntu. We're going to kind of take this line and we're just going to make sure everything is up to date. So you copy this and you're going to set it up to date. For those who might first using it, it might tell you to set a password and stuff when you log in. I've already done that. I'm just going to throw that in. It's going to try and get all the latest updates for this. We'll come back once the password is up to date. Brilliant. So once we've got our version updated, we're now going to do the next part. So once you've got your latest version updated, you're just going to take this line here, copy it in and paste it into your Ubuntu, your terminal, your Linux, whatever you are using. 
This is just sort of installing all of the pieces we need to start actually building and making our file. So once we've got that, you're gonna hit enter and it's gonna run through everything. Again, I've already got everything updated, so it's not gonna to take too long, but for you guys, it might take a few minutes. And with that, we are pretty much set up with the technology we need to get going. So now I just wanna give you a quick heads up on how we're gonna actually start using this. So we're not gonna be using WSL's file system. So it has its own little file system which you can move through. The benefit about using this, is we can mount ourselves into the standard Windows sort of file system. This allows you to open, see all your files directly from your Windows browsers. Now, once we've got everything updated and installed, we're gonna start going into where we're gonna make our files. So some of you may be used to using this way of sort of moving around your files, which is very simple and very sort of easy to pick up we're going to be doing it inside of the terminal don't worry if this is a little bit scary you can't really break anything if you follow exactly what i do and i'll try to explain as we go along so we're currently in what's called the root file this is sort of like the base of the tree base of where everything is going we're going to be using cd a lot this just stands for change directory it is just the same as when you click a file so if i sort of double click at something here and it goes into it it's changing a directory in linux they don't call them folders, they call them directories, they're the same things. So once this is done, we can see it's done, we can do ls, and we can see this new file that's been created called Pokemon Emerald Expansion. And if we go into our finder, we can see documents, apps, custom run Pokemon Triver, which I created earlier, we can now see Pokemon Emerald Expansion. And here it is. This is the code we need to get started. This is everything we need, everything we get going, and what we're gonna start doing, because we're ROM hacking, is making changes on this. First, let's actually make and check it works. So what we're going to do is go into that file. If you remember Poke, uh, CD, Pokemon Emerald Expansion, we can do ls to list all that files. And you can see these are exactly the same as these. Golden. Just going to hit clear. If you want to give yourself more space, just type in clear and it'll move everything away. Now in here, I want to check. Well, I want to start building it. So we use a command called make. This can take quite a while, especially the first time you do it. If you have a sort of beefier computer, you can do nproc. This just counts the number of processors you have in your computer. And we can use this to pass, so instead of using just one sort of thread in your computer, so making it all do it one at a time, we can spread it across the different cores you have in your processor. And it just speeds it up. So I'm gonna do make and j. This is defining the number of cores I wanna use in 24. And then we just get going. And this is gonna take the code and build it up. It's gonna compile it. You'll hear the terms sort of decompilation and compilation used a lot when we're doing this. Decompiling and decompilation is where you have just all the code in its, very, in, in its base language. You need to take that and compile it up into an actual viable sort of product. This is varied based on sort of the language you're using, the sort of thing you're deploying. In our case, because we're doing a ROM hack, it's actually making that GBA file, the file that you can run on the emulator and play your game. At, after you've done everything, this is what you need to do to get started and actually make it playable. So once we've done that, we'll, we'll come back once it's compiled and see the game running. So when it's all finished, you'll see something like this. You'll see the silent, which just means we're all good. And then here you'll see the memory used. The main thing you'll need to be aware of is when you're actually doing ROM hacking, unlike say a fan game built in Game Maker, you are limited to the size of the cartridge. The old cartridges would only store, while well, the base game of Emerald was limited to 16 megabytes. We've extended that to 32 because that's the most space you can actually put on a cartridge. And the great thing about ROM hacking is you can actually put it on the original hardware. You can get yourself a blank sort of cartridge, insert the game into it, and you can play it on your Game Boy. As you're developing and as you're building it up, you just need to be wary that you're not going to go over this number. If you start hitting 100%, you just physically can't put anything else in. There's no more space to do it. For most things, that's not going to be too much an issue. If you're doing a very large piece, just be wary and make sure you're saving space as you go along. But we can open up our folder here, and at the bottom, we can see Pokemon Emerald.gba. And there it is, it's running. And this is our the version we've sort of created. You know it's going to be the one we have because when we set it, you're going to have here this sort of special little intro to show this is the prep and the expansion with a couple of little animations. Otherwise, it is the core game with everything you want. So I hope this was helpful. If you have specific questions or want to go into some other things, drop a comment and I'll get back to you. And then in the next one, 
you will show you how to update onto Pori Maps and Pori Scripts, which are two fantastic tools to make everything so much easier.